All right, go ahead. Hello, I'm Sarah. Um, our group is doing Crohn's disease. So what is Crohn's disease? It's also known as granul granulomitis or colitis, regional enteritis. Um, it basically is a nonspecific inflammatory disease of the bowel. Um, and it occurs usually in the ileum, jejunum, and the colon. Um, as you can see, there are different types of it, and it really can affect any part of your GI tract. And it can vary between person to person. Some people have more areas affected versus others, as you can, as you can see in the picture. Um, and it usually it spreads deep into the um, affected bowel tissue. So some of the symptoms, um, they kind of range from mild to severe. So um, it, sometimes they're not very active, but then other times they are very, um, it's kind of like a going back and forth between big flare up. Um, and so some of them can include diarrhea, fever, fatigue, abdominal pains, cramping, blood in the stool, mouth sores, reduced appetite, weight loss, and then so these aren't usually the main that those are the ones that first like occur like people see but um, a lot of the times as it continues going on inflammation does happen um, in your skin your joints liver and in bile ducts and these symptoms can increasingly get worse um, and cause other things later which we'll discuss um, some of the causes are um, well, there's not really a specific cause found, but um, some of them are um, immune system problems. So um, in your body, you have like helpful full microbes that are in your gut and, and all that kind of stuff that helps with um, just keeping you healthy. But um, sometimes those will um, make a mistake and um, they'll defend against those, creating inflammation and inf or will have an inflammation response won't stop. Um, another thing is genetics. So usually um, 10 to 20 percent has one other family member who has it um, or it can come down from like a family line. Um, there usually is a gene mutation or change that happens. Um, there's a couple different genes but they haven't found a specific one that is the majority one that causes the change. Um, and sometimes it's just environmental factors, so something you ate, um, smoke, the microbes, and then um, we found that more with urbanization in like a certain climate, so in Western Europe and North America, there's an increase of Crohn's, and they were confused because like they don't understand why there's rates lower in Asia and the Middle East because Asia is like usually highly pop uh, popular. Um, so. Um, I don't know why. Oh, okay. So, um, and now we're on to diagnosis. So, what they usually will do is they take a look at the history and the symptoms that were reported from the patient, um, and then they'll do a physical physical examination. So they'll look for hair loss, dry skin, poor skin turgor. Um, they'll also palpitate the patient's abdomen pain. Um, abdomen for pain, tenderness, and distension. It's usually done, they start in the right lower quadrant. However, um, it can be like, we talked about there's different types, it can be in different areas, um, but they'll usually start there because that's the most common, um, and then they'll go to different areas. Um, they'll also listen to the sounds of your digestive tract and things going down because um, there are certain sounds that can help diagnose what type of Crohn's you might have. Um, other things are they can do tests, so lab tests. They look at um, infection, inflammation, and low levels of iron, protein, and minerals. Um, they do a colonoscopy or a sigmo sigmoidoscopy. They'll do barium x-rays or other x-rays and CT and MRIs. They also do um, what's called a video capsule endoscopy. So my sister has Crohn's disease and she had this one done. Um, and what it is, it's basically like on the picture, it's like a, literally a pill and there's a camera inside, you swallow it and then as it goes down, it takes pictures of your insides um, and then it will like upload to the doctor so they can look at 
um, like the wall lining of your in, like intestines. So um, next, we'll um, they'll do treatment. Um, there's no really like cure for it, but they'll do more just trying to manage your symptoms. So they'll have medica medications for those. Um, anti-inflammatory drugs because it is an inflammation type disease. Um, antibiotics, they'll do a diet, which is a low FODMAP diet. Um, and there's just certain things that you avoid eating because they will kind of cause flare ups uh, versus other things. Um, so one of the big ones is limit the high fructose um, in things. It doesn't have to be like, there's a lot of high fructose in like apples. So that's one of the main things that they don't eat. Um, another thing is supplements, um, exercise, and then surgery. There's a couple different types. Um, usually that's only if it gets super severe. So um, stricter plasty, uh, resection, colectomy, that's when it's like you remove your whole colon, and then the protocolectomy, that's removing your colon and your uh, rectum. Um, so some of the like risk factors or complications that can continue on, you can get colon cancer, um, ulcers, you have malnutrition, um, bowel obstructions occur, um, and medication risks. And for prognosis, like I said earlier, um, there's no known cure for it, um, but this is an interesting disease where they will have periods and it can be months, it can be years of inactivity, um, well, like of activity, but then it can be followed by um, remission, which is like, you still have it, but there's no symptoms occurring, so it's like that big flare up, um, it can just occur back and forth. Um, some people will have more complications and more of aggressive form of the disease. Um, it kind of just depends on the person and where it's at. Um, so it's really important to get your nutrition in check because that can help a lot with um, your flare-ups and with the malnutrition and all that kind of stuff. So um, just have a routine checkup with your doctor and then it's really important to notify them if something starts changing. Uh, and then it's really important to also like make sure they have correct support. So food is a very big part of our lives and it's very social and so um, when you can't eat some of those things, their mental health um, can kind of go down or they can even have times where um, they feel fine one moment and then the next they're in increasing pain and they can't go out anymore. Um, so it's really important to just check up on their mental status because that can really go down. Um, but then also just give them support and the resources needed to continue.